so now today's topic is about confidence intervals okay so what are confidence intervals first of all so up till now we were doing this point estimate okay so we were given a random distribution uh, a normal distribution okay and we were told that get a point estimate of the population mean so this is x bar so we were told what is the point estimate of mu okay so uh, right in a previous example we said point estimate is 10 okay but that is you know observed just from one sample right so your point estimate that you give can be a range okay so first of all we were saying that mu is equal to 10 now i am saying that mu can range from 10 to 12 okay and i can say this with a certain confidence right i can say this with suppose a 95% confidence that my population mean mu will lie between 8 and 12 okay so um a question for all of you uh, let me clear padlet what if i say what if i want to predict the population mean with suppose 99% confidence what should be the range should the range increase like from 7 to 13 or should the range decrease from suppose 9 to 11 so these are the three options okay um 8 to 10, 12 9 to 11 and 7 to 13 option 1 2 3 which what should be the answer what should be the most likely answer if i say that i want to predict with 99% confidence okay so most of the people are saying 7 by 13 there are some people who said 9 8 by 8 to 12 there's someone who said 9 to 11 also so i don't know if you changed your answer but it's good to discuss that why should the range increase right so now see earlier you had 95% confidence okay if you want to increase with 99% confidence if you want to be certain that a value will lie within a range your range will increase right because now you can say that you have increased your uh, values that mu can take so your confidence will increase right um let me give you an example um okay so suppose someone stole a book in a class okay someone stole my book in a class okay now i have five students who i have suspect okay now i can say that with 90% confidence i can say that these five people one of these five people have stolen my book okay now if i suppose include the entire class how much confidence will that become like one of this entire class has chosen has stolen my book your confidence will go up to 100% right everyone is everyone understands this please let me know in chat or any way possible okay cool uh so now similarly if the five people i remove two people okay so now there are three people so your confidence will decrease right now i will be suppose um, like 80% confidence only that one of these three people have stolen my book okay so now this concept should be clear that when you are increasing the confidence your range is increasing when you are decreasing the confidence your range is decreasing okay cool so let's study what we actually mean by confidence intervals 
so a confidence interval provides an interval estimate of an unknown parameter okay so as we were studying mu this was the point estimate the interval estimate is from suppose 10 to 8 to 12 okay so it is designed to contain the parameter's value with some stated probability so our probability was 95% Okay, we are zero point nine five percent, zero point nine five probability that our mu will lie between eight to twelve. Okay, now the width of the interval provides a measure of the precision accuracy of the estimated interval. So this is what we have studied that the width of the interval four. This provides an estimate of the confidence we have in the estimator. Okay, we have ninety five percent confidence that the width is four. Okay. Now, ninety-five percent confidence, alpha equal to point zero five, are the most common. Now, you might ask, what is the meaning of alpha? Uh, we'll come to that. Okay. So, for now, just think, ninety-five percent confidence interval is the most common. Okay. The correct interpretation of a ninety-five percent confidence interval, lower and upper, is that. We are ninety-five percent confident that the population parameter is between L and U. So, what do we mean by this? This is L. This is U. Okay. So now, what I'm saying is that um, this this point, these two points. Okay. So this is the lower point. This is the upper point. Okay. So now, what I'm saying is that I am ninety-five percent confident. i am 95% confident that my uh, population mean will lie between these two points so this is the probability that i am looking for okay okay so here the area under the curve for this part is 0.95 okay so what should be the area of this part these red part and this blue part can you please Answer this thing. Zero point two five. Okay, so um, for both of them, it should be it should be zero point two seven five. No, why should it be zero point two seven five? You will point zero two five. Point zero two five. Okay, it will be zero point zero two five. Yeah. Because see, zero point zero two five, this side, and zero point zero two five this side. So the sum of red and blue is then zero point zero five. Okay, so and zero point zero five is nothing but one minus point nine five. Okay, so this is what we mean by alpha. Now this this part is the alpha. The sum of the probabilities that we do not require. Okay. Okay. If it is clear to you, then tell me. For how will you find the z value corresponding to this point? How will you find the z value for this point? For a particular um, point or range. No, so z value is always a CDF, okay. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I just got confused. Okay, uh, let me know in Padlet. How will you find the z value? What is the value that you will look for? Like the CDF value that you will look for? Is it uh, one minus half of it? and can you also look up uh, can you also tell me what is the z value for that can you actually do it uh, like using the python package okay so bhardwaj is like has the correct annotation i would say So I want this probability. So I can not this probability. Oh, sorry. I want this probability. 
द जेड वैल्यू can you also let me know the z value please what should be the z value of that point can you just you don't need to write the full uh, the code or the full sentence you can just write the value i'm fine with that You don't have the collab notebook open, I think. Okay, so Prabhat has given me the right uh, Z value, almost the right. Okay, now he has. Akhilesh has given me the right Z value. Okay, thank you so much, Akhilesh. Uh, Jimmy, okay, Jimmy is giving me two. That is not the right answer. Okay, so the Z value will correspond to the, the CDF of Zero point nine seven five, okay, and this should be equal to one point nine six, okay. So this point, the upper, this U, can be defined as mu plus one point nine six sigma, okay. By mu and sigma, I not uh, okay. Don't let don't confuse this, okay. So. This upper is the population mean x bar and 1.96 sigma by root n. Okay, so what will lower be? What will the lower be? X bar minus 1.6 sigma. Okay, so I think someone said. X bar minus 1.96 sigma by root n. Why can we just write minus over here? Why don't we need to calculate? Any question? Any thoughts? Why? Why can we just write x bar minus 1.96? Harsh, uh, this is a question to you. You were asking the mu minus x bar and x bar minus mu, right? Harsh. Yeah, right. ma'am. Uh, first of all, I'm not able to comprehend how we are getting this x bar plus 1.96 uh, sigma by under root n. Okay. So uh, cool. So this x bar is mu plus this is the z value. So wait. Uh, let me take another page. Okay. So what what do we know right now? X bar minus mu upon sigma by root n is equal to the z value. Yeah, sure. Okay, so which is equal to one point nine six. We have just seen. Sure. Okay, so what should the x bar be? X bar is equal to z value z into sigma by root n plus mu. Like so, I write mu plus. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this is how we get, and the same thing. Now, now answer me. Why can we just write a mu minus? Uh, Z into sigma by root n. So why don't we need to calculate? Anyone knows the answer? Why are we subtracting uh, like uh, mu for the lower bound uh, value? So uh, we just. Uh, Mayank, it is mod x minus mu. I'm sorry. Uh, In numerator, mod? it is mod x minus mu. No, there is no mod over here. There is no concept of mod. It's just okay. x bar. Maya, this is just lower and upper bound. Right. So for lower bound, uh, you are asking why we are subtracting, right? Yeah. Why are we just replacing? Why can we write plus minus over here? Like plus is uh, giving upper bound and uh, minus is giving us lower bound. Correct. But what is that? So upper bound will be always uh, greater than mean, and lower bound will be lesser than mean. 
okay Maybe. so that is a theek okay, hai that is a doable explanation but the main the right explanation for this is that a normal distribution is centered around the mean okay so whatever value you have for this probability over here the same value will come over here with a negative sign oh okay yeah. so we'll come to this in a while so just know just for now just know how have we defined the upper and the lower bound okay so everyone is fine with l and u how have we defined that lower and upper bound so harsh to just for your uh, again so here we are just interchanging this okay so x bar minus mu is now a negative value since we are calculating for this point x bar minus mu is now a negative value okay so i will write sigma by root n is equal to minus z or okay. you can or you can just interchange this mu minus x bar okay and if you convert this like if you just bring it to this form you will get mu minus z into sigma by root n so we are able to write it uh, by changing the negative side, by changing positive to negative right so it depends on uh, which side of the mean you are calculating this z value uh, i guess earlier you had asked us why we can not do it you had asked why we cannot just simply uh, change positive sign to negative ha huh. so is there any question with regard to that but uh, isn't this exactly what we have done here now why we can just change it uh, earlier we had mu plus uh, z into sigma by under root n mm -hmm. and for the next case we have just uh, simply changed the positive sign with the negative one so because see now you are calculating this is the uh, this is the value that you want to calculate v okay exactly so now what will this be how will you calculate this v so this this term this is a negative value is that clear yes okay so now if i just if i just write this and if i just think that x bar is a positive value uh, this x bar minus mu this value is a positive value like the mod of it is a positive value then i will just uh, interchange the signs of this part right i can just write mu minus x bar okay so mu minus v or x is whatever okay so i okay. want to calculate this this distance sure okay so earlier we were calculating this distance so here we had this is x bar so earlier we were doing x bar minus mu now we are doing mu minus x bar which is nothing but we are just taking the positive sign right we are not doing anything else okay okay so similarly like in that same example that we did no okay let me go back to this okay this question what is the probability that mu is greater than 12 okay now if i just ask this question over here what is the probability that mu is less than 8 So how will you calculate this? Like twelve minus eight by sigma. No, no, the mu is ten over here. Okay. So how will you calculate this? Harsh, I'm looking to you for answer. Yeah, because... sure. So, uh, like you just uh, told us, uh, so it would be ten minus eight, right? Ten minus eight uh, divided by sigma by under root ten. So see why will it be ten minus eight over here? You want to calculate the z value right now, okay? I do not, I do not care about the distance. I will, I care about the z value. Okay, what if you do ten minus eight? Okay, so ten minus eight upon whatever one point three three. Now the z value that you get is one point five, right? Is this correct? Is this one point five correct according to you? The z value should be negative, right? Sure. This is minus. 
Yeah, Kilish, are you saying something? So it should be eight minus ten, right? Correct. It is eight minus ten. So over here, over here, this z. What is this? This is only a positive value right now. This is the mod of act the actual z that we should get. This is the mod of z. This minus sign is because of that. Okay. Okay. Your actual range will be mu plus one point nine six sigma by root n, and mu plus minus one point nine six sigma by root n. So this this z over here is minus one point nine six. I have just taken the sign out. Okay. Is this clear now? Sure. Are you sure? I you said sure, but are you sure? Uh, yeah, I I think so. Okay. Okay. So um, let's take this example of. Uh, okay, let's do this exercise first. Okay. Um. So I have. Uh, Okay. Okay. So this is my experiment where I am taking a normal distribution. Okay. Now I am choosing a sample of suppose size five. There are only five data points in my sample. Okay. So small x one, small x two, small x three, small x four, small x five. I have five small x's. Okay. Now my confidence interval. Is a ninety percent confidence interval. Okay, so let's do this example. Okay, so now you can see this five data points. The blue dot, that is the mean. Okay. This blue dot is the mean, and with ninety five with ninety percent confidence, this is the confidence. Uh, this is the confidence width that we were saying upper minus lower. Okay. so now you can see that 90% of the time it will be such that uh, your your population mean mu is lying within this range okay so what is this blue line giving us can anyone tell me what is this blue line it is the range of is range of uh, no can you tell me in mathematical terms what is this blue line confidence interval um so you have suppose these parameters given to you sigma uh, sample mean and the number of samples which is 5 what would you say the this blue line is mu plus minus sigma mu plus minus z sigma you don't know oh. mu you know x bar you want to calculate you want to give an interval for mu Anyone? Uh, blue dot is the x bar, and the blue line is the interval. It is one minus alpha by two, one one plus alpha. Okay, I think uh, this is not clear. I'll just clear Padlet, and you can write your answers there. Okay, now please tell me what is this x bar that we are seeing over here. uh sorry what is this blue line this that we're seeing over here you have the population variance uh, sigma square you have the sample mean the sample size okay so what is this blue line
Okay, I see some answers. X bar is it divided by n plus minus sigma? Um, plus minus sigma? No, that's not correct. X bar minus alpha by two. Okay. Confidence interval in accordance with the sample values. I need the mathematical um, range. You, I want you to give me the answer in so in this in this way. Comma this. Okay. I want to I want you guys to give me this. Fill in the blanks for this. What are the two values? You repeat the mu, uh, sigma, and n values. Just calculating. You just think of it this way, no? Like you just have n, small n. You have sigma, and you have x bar, small x bar. That is it. There is no value to it. You just have these three uh, values. X bar plus minus sigma by root square root of n. Okay. See that is not that is partly correct. Okay, you are forgetting the z value that we have calculated. The confidence interval is always corresponding to a z value. So here x bar plus minus sigma by root n, that is for z value of one, and z value of one is I think sixty four percent confidence interval. Okay. I am seeing x bar minus alpha by two, x bar plus z upon root n. No. X bar plus minus alpha into sigma by root n. Okay, you have to see the the alpha by. Uh, you should mean the z value of ninety percent. Okay, z value corresponding to not. Ninety percent, but actually ninety-five percent, because see, when you are calculating the z value for corresponding to ninety percent confidence, this will be five percent, and this will be five percent, right? This will be five percent. So this CDF value over here will be for CDF equal to zero point nine five. And not zero point nine zero, okay. So yeah, please. Only, I see, twelve answers. What are the rest? Rest fifteen doing? So, so Bhagya, one point nine six is for ninety five percent confidence. Here we have ninety ninety percent confidence, so it's fine. Like I think you got what we are actually saying, okay? And it is not new. New we don't know. New we are estimating. We okay. know x bar. Okay, so x bar will come. Okay. Okay. so i think uh, let's move on since we are a little short on time so this value that we have over here this blue line that is x bar minus z value corresponding to 0.90 we'll write 0.90 okay into sigma by root n Okay, and this this blue line, and this blue line is x bar plus 
जेड जीरो पॉइंट नाइन सिग्मा बाय रूट एन ओके सो दिस इज वॉट वी मीन बाय कॉन्फिडेंस इंटरव्यू सो दिस इज वन सैम्पल दिस इज वन सैम्पल ओके दिस वन इज वन सैम्पल सो यू कैन सी दैट फॉर डिफरेंट सैम्पल्स द कॉन्फिडेंस इंटरवल्स विल बी डिफरेंट इज दिस स्टेटमेंट क्लियर फॉर एवरी सैम्पल द कॉन्फिडेंस इंटरवल विल बी डिफरेंट please yeah. let me know in chat if this is clear harsh i am very scared of your sure now okay you you right yes if you are clear okay <laughs> okay cool so now everyone is clear that okay so now if i suppose uh, uh my one thing if we are getting a uh, different uh, if we are getting for different sample different confidence interval so then how we are going to get the population mean out of that so you will just have one sample yeah okay you are not so see um now again another concept over here so now you just have one sample so you will just see one line over here that is falling you will just see one line okay so this range for this line what did we study it is x bar minus z into sigma by root n okay now n over here is 5 okay so what if i increase this n what if i increase this n to so suppose it will tend to x bar it will tend to x bar yeah it will tend to zero so that is not correct see so if i increase this n this term this will become smaller right yeah okay so our confidence interval is becoming smaller so earlier this was this was 95% confidence 95% confidence and now this is only 95% confidence okay so we have increased our accuracy right it is clear yes yes sir okay so if we increase our sample size we are increasing our accuracy so let's write this with increasing n our accuracy increases so we just have one sample think about this we just have one sample so you would want to get a sample which has a high n right now uh, and one more thing man uh, if if i increase the number of samples then all, then that would affect the uh, my population mean no no why are you so accuracy. concerned with increasing the samples right now we are studying inferential statistics you just have okay. one sample nothing else okay. okay okay if you have more samples all the better but see what will happen most of the time is you know when you are suppose running a decision tree algorithm you will run it on one sample of like suppose 1 million rows okay and you have a population of 500 million rows so you will not run that decision tree multiple times on thousands of samples you will just run it once okay 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 so now see uh, let's do it with this suppose now i have only five samples and i do it with 99% confidence okay so this is my uh, length of the confidence interval okay now i want you to shout guys now i want you to shout it out guys if i reduce this alpha will my confidence increase or decrease will my confidence interval increase or decrease Shout it out. Decrease. 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 Anyone thinks it should increase? I mean, did the alpha increase or decrease? So, see, this is the confidence interval. Zero point eight is the confidence interval. It is not alpha. Alpha is point two. Uh, then the confidence should decrease. So, con what what did you say? Confidence should. Should decrease. okay so that is correct 
your confidence will become now see it is smaller because you are reducing the uh, confidence interval now if i suppose reduce it further this much it will be very less as you can see okay now let's increase this back to 95% now you can see this is the confidence interval i'm getting okay now if i increase n is the sample size will the confidence interval increase or decrease everyone please shout it out decrease 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 okay that is correct so you can see that the confidence interval has not decreased okay now let me just do it over here itself now you can see it is increased okay so this intuition is clear so we are just concerned with one sample okay okay now let's go with some examples and some further so we have studied this okay so this is a normal distribution we have studied this so no point looking at this again so now uh, uh we have also studied this where we have taken out uh, the upper and lower limits for uh, 95% confidence so we are taking the z value for 0.025 okay and 0.975 okay everyone is fine with this part as well anyone has any doubts if anyone thinks we should take z, uh, z of 0.05 we just repeat like we take this uh, because there are two tails right there are two tails like two sides uh, that is why we take 0.025 right correct at the confidence okay. correct so confidence interval is between a range right you cannot have confidence interval where z is zero and so you cannot have a confidence interval such as this okay you cannot have a confidence interval which says my uh, mu which is a uh, my mu will lie between negative infinity to suppose uh two it cannot be like this right it has to be within a range so mostly when using a, a t distribution z distribution chi square distribution anything of that sort we take the same value like this and this is the same okay so that way we can come up with uh the like the mid range of that uh, estimate okay okay anyone has any doubts so mayang the generalized formula for the confidence interval will be x bar plus minus z of 1 minus alpha sigma by root n right correct so wait wait yash so this is when you want to find the mean and when you know the sigma okay okay so we'll come to that just hold on we'll come to that we'll take an example okay so now um, we have 40 minutes i think it should be good enough okay so average iq of a sample of 50 university students okay i'll hide the uh, solution i think everyone is now capable of understanding this and i want you guys to please attempt before we discuss the solution the average iq of 50 university students was found to be 132 okay so what is um, can you describe any any of the values that you know from this from this statement x, alone x bar we can say 132 and m is what n is 50 um okay cool uh, so i want everyone to just write it in chat okay um because there are some people who are still trying out so you are correct so x bar is 132 and n is 50 over here okay now calculate a symmetric 95% confidence interval for the average iq of university students okay so what are we trying to get what are we trying to find please write it in chat the average iq of university students represents what please write it in chat what is the average iq of university students meaning
No, Tohi, that is not X bar. X bar we have seen it is 132. So this is the sample. 50 university students, this is the sample. Okay, so X bar is 132. Uh, can you please write to me in personal chat now? Please uh, don't write it to everyone. Just write to personal chat to me. Okay, so now we know that this is average IQ of university students is the population mean. So we want to calculate a symmetrical 95% confidence interval for mu. Okay, assuming that IQs are normally distributed. Okay, so now it is known that previous studies that the standard deviation of IQs among students is approximately 20. So what is this 20? Right, please write it to me in personal chat. What is this 20? Sarvesh, you are jumping right now. Okay, I think most of the people have the right answer. So, yeah, it is the population standard deviation. Okay, so now can you tell me the final answer? What is the symmetrical 95% confidence interval? So, please just calculate it. How will you do it? What is the variance of the sample means? Just calculate it using that. Just let me know the lower bound, okay? It is fine. Only I can just do it one, uh, one of the value. You can just let me know the lower bound. So for people who are still not understanding what we are doing, so here we have n is 50, the x bar is equal to 132, and we have uh, sigma is equal to 20, okay? So our sample means capital X bar can be described as a normal distribution 132 comma 20 by root 50 okay so what is the 95 percent confidence it is 132 plus minus z value corresponding to so we wanted to 95 percent okay so again just draw it out in front of you so this should be 0 0.025 okay so z value corresponding to 0 0.975 multiplied by 20 by root 50 okay so your confidence intervals should give me minus 1.96 into 20 by root 50 and 132 plus 1.96 into 20 by root 50. Okay, so this is the final answer that you should get. Okay, so for people who have got 126.5 and 137.5, you have the right answer. So someone has written 20 by 50, so that is not correct. And minus 0 0.5. I don't know why you have written minus 0 0.5, Harsh. Harsh, is there still any doubt? Uh, no, I have corrected myself. Uh, basically, I've made a mistake. Uh, after that, I have corrected myself. Okay, so that you mean Z value corresponding to that. Not exactly. Yeah. Okay. okay, cool. So I think everyone has understood. So one other uh, problem that we can uh, do over here is that... Uh, you might be asked, what is the value of n for which we can uh, attain this margin of error? So what will happen is, suppose um, in the same problem, 
let's say uh, you don't know this n okay you don't know this n so now my question is um, for what value of n can we have a margin of error for of suppose uh, 10 your margin of error 10 is the margin of error so what is the margin of error this is the entire this okay so this is z plus sigma by root n and this is uh, sorry mu plus z into and this is mu minus z into sigma by root n so what is this value this is nothing but this minus this which is nothing but 4 into uh, sorry 2 into z into sigma by root n okay it is clear what do you mean by margin of error so can you give me the value of n for what value of n can we may have a margin of margin of error of 10 may i just wanted to ask what is the intuition behind margin of error so um, see if you have a larger n your confidence interval will be lower right yeah so i want to find that value of n for which this this length this is equal to 10 okay so if you increase n this length will become lower so your margin of error will decrease yeah okay so i want that value of n for which you have you can have this uh, margin of error of 10 anyone has got the same answer? as confidence interval I'm sorry, same as confidence interval. What do you mean by that? Is margin of error same as confidence interval? So margin of error is the same, like margin of error is the entire range. So, so this part, so this part, this is Z into sigma by root n. Okay, so your margin of error is this entire this part, so which is nothing but two into z into sigma by root n. Okay, so it's uh, like it is not like you cannot call it the um, confidence interval. It is the entire confidence interval. Okay, clear, Akesh or. Uh, I just had one observation. So MOE basically tells us how large we should have the sample to have that particular kind of confidence interval. Correct. Uh, At a 95% confidence. So how, how much large the sample should be so that we have a, uh, that particular confidence That range. Interval. That range, of, that range. Of, of confidence interval. Okay. Okay. Cool. So I think most of the people are getting the right answer, which is 62 uh, so, Akhilesh, you have gotten 7.06. That is not right. Uh, Mayank, I have subtracted the lower and upper limit, then I have equated to 2z sigma by root n. Okay, so let's uh, do this. Time. Let's let's do this. So, uh, I can just assume 1.96 to be equal to 2. So, 4 into 40 by root n is equal to um, what 10. So you need to multiply by two as well, right? Oh, I've done four. Achha, okay, you it should be two. Uh, no, I've done the right thing. It is two into one point nine six, which is four into um, what is this value? Sigma is twenty. So four into twenty by root n is equal to ten. Okay, so root n should be equal to 8 square, like almost 64. So it should be less than 64. Okay, so people who are getting 62, that is the right answer. Okay, I haven't squared that. Hmm. But still, 7, you should not get 7. No? You should get like around something like 8. 7.84. Yeah, correct. Cool. So I think everyone gets it. Yash, why are you getting 13? Can you let me know? I think you have not 
uh, multiplied by two, right? Yeah, I am not multiplied by two. I have multiplied by one point nine six. Okay. Cool. Uh, hey, hey, Mike, I had a doubt. Yeah, Shira. Uh, so I thought the margin of error was only that term for say for one point nine six into sigma by root n for a ninety five percent confidence interval, or is it two into because the width is two into margin of error, right? Yeah, so this is right. Width is equal to two into margin of error. So if margin of error is ten, that would mean one point nine six into sigma by root n is ten, right? Uh, so um, like, see, when we are asking this question, no, what we mean by margin of error? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you mean the entire width? Okay. 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 So, yeah. um, like, you can clarify this with uh, the interviewer what he means by margin of error, but mm -hmm. in most of the cases, you will. Have to calculate the margin of error as the total width. Okay, you will not be calculating for just for one side because that does not make sense. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, yeah. So now let's move forward. Uh, so what if we don't know the population variance? Okay. So now we will use the sample variance or the sample standard deviation. Okay. So now. Um, Again, the same thing. You will be given a sample, and you will know all of the data points in the sample. So you know x bar, and you know s, which is the sample standard deviation. Okay. So now you will be asked to calculate uh, what is the confidence interval for my population mean. So now you don't know sigma. Okay. So now you will use the t distribution, and not the z distribution. Okay, so the similar concept applies to the t distribution. So even the t distribution is uh, centered around the mean. Okay, so even the t distribution is centered around the mean, and the only difference is that um, the t distribution varies for different uh, degrees of freedom. Okay, so the degrees of freedom you can calculate using the sample size. Okay, so suppose you have five, uh, five small x's, x i, so your degrees of freedom will be four. Okay, so this is the only difference we are going to see for a t distribution. So again, I think everyone has is now understanding what we mean by this confidence interval and how to calculate the range of values for which uh, we can calculate the population mean. So now, uh, again, I will hide the solution. I want you guys to quickly do this. Okay, this is um, again. Now tell me what are the parameters that you know in this. So again, like we did the last time, x bar, mu, sigma, whatever you know. Okay, so calculate a ninety-five percent confidence interval for the average height of a ten-year-old child or average height of ten-year-old children. Okay. Assuming that heights have a normal distribution, where mu and sigma are unknown. So, based on a random sample of five children, whose heights are this? So, I want you guys to first let me know what is the um, what is what are all the different parameters that you can what you know from here. Okay, so Harsh is right. What other parameters Harsh you can calculate also? So Herschel says we know the sample mean. We could calculate sample mean, yeah. Okay. Akhilesh says we know the sample mean and the sample variance. Okay. Akhilesh, you are right. We know the sample variance also. N is given x bar. We can get okay. X bar we can get okay. So here you can calculate actually uh, the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. Okay, you know n, and you know the degrees of freedom. What will the degrees of freedom be? Four, right? So, um, can you calculate the range ranges for me? My, uh, is there a shortcut for calculating standard deviation, or we have to use the big formula? Um, so you can just you know calculate it on uh, Python only. It will take a range of values. Okay. If you, you can just pass a list to it. 
uh, math dot standard dev some st dev something was there there some formula so i can just google it for you calculate some uh, standard So let me tell you what the sample deviation we are getting from here, 124, 122, 130, 125 and 132. Okay, so the sample standard deviation is 3.77. Okay. The mean is 126.6. Uh, that is for a population. You have selected population there. Above. Yeah, actually, for population, they take as an. Here, here, above. above below the numbers. Oh, okay. Well, uh, for a sample, see, we will get to that. Don't worry. Right now, just calculate the standard deviation, like how we do it. It is 4.21 for a sample. I got 4.21. Okay, okay, that is yeah, fine. same here. Like four point one is four point two one only. Okay. Yeah. So don't worry. We are all on the same page. Okay. So now can you calculate the ranges? Cal can you calculate the ranges? Not uh, Z. Shivam, it is not Z. Mayank, can you tell how to view the distribution table? I'm a bit confused by the degree of freedom thing. So you calculate this for degrees of freedom equal to four. So don't view the table right now. Just use the Python uh, cp.stats import key. Okay, okay, okay. So you can pass two parameters there. So Srinivasan has, I think, got the right answer already. Good going, Srinivasan. So you are correct. Okay. So let's see the actual calculation. So uh, the T statistic for this is minus 2.776 for a 95% confidence with alpha with uh, degrees of freedom four. Okay. So what we will do is. Uh, this is the sample mean minus the t-statistic into the standard deviation of the sample divided by root 5. n is 5. Okay, so uh, we should get the answer 121.4 and 131.8. Okay. Everyone has gotten this answer. Everyone is clear how to get this answer. It is the same thing as standard as a, a Z distribution, right? It is just that we don't know the sigma here. So we have to calculate the degrees of freedom and the T, T statistic, okay? Okay. Anyone has not understood. I want to know your, uh, I want to see your no. If you have not understood. Okay. See, everyone has understood. Now let's go to the chi-square statistic. Okay. So now we want to get an estimate of the variance of the population from one sample. Okay. So you have one sample and you want to get an estimate of the variance of the population. So uh, you remember the chi-square uh, formula? What was the chi-square formula? It was n minus one sample variance divided by sigma square. This is equal to the chi-square with n minus one degrees of freedom. Okay. So now again, with 95% confidence, what will you do? You want to get an estimate of sigma square. Okay, 
so what will you do your uh, lower bound will become you just take this over here and bring this over here so it will become n minus 1 s square upon sigma square upon chi upon the chi square chi square statistic for 0.025 okay and with n minus 1 degrees of freedom now uh, harsh we cannot write plus minus over here okay because chi square statistic is not evenly distributed about the mean this is z and this is t this is not chi square okay so if you remember chi square statistic it was something like this or this and as you increase the degrees of freedom it was becoming more normal okay so initially if you remember the chi square statistic was not uh it is not evenly distributed about the mean so we cannot write plus minus okay so um you will write this is the first this is the lower bound and the upper bound will become n minus 1 s square upon chi square corresponding to 0.975 again same like we did for z and t your alpha is 0.05 so the distribution for value which you want is 0.025 and 0.975 okay so similarly and this will be your uh, upper bound okay everyone is clear with this also please let me know if if it is not clear now here we are estimating the sigmas okay so now let's do an example now let's do an example so again i want you guys to uh, write to me in direct chat so calculate a 95% confidence interval for the standard deviation of 10 year old children assuming that the same thing and the random sample of five children whose heights are this so the all of the values are the same okay so now can you calculate the lower and upper bound of this uh, population variance does anyone not have uh any idea of how to go about solving this problem everyone has an idea of how we are going to solve this problem i am a bit confused by this line assuming that heights have a uh, normal distribution so all of these statistics t f chi chi square all of these are only valid when the underlying populations uh, distribution is a normal distribution right okay so this line is just saying that the underlying populations distribution is a normal distribution so prabhat has already uh, written all of the important variables and prabhat that is correct also anyone else has the answer could you please uh, give us some analogy i had the numbers but uh, i'm not getting what approach to use okay so have you calculated the sample variance or the the sample standard deviation have you calculated that prabhat it, it will be same from the upper question yeah yeah uh, prabhat let me ask sobhagya uh, sobhagya have you calculated that 
Yeah, I'm just uh, reaching the answer just in the middle. Just about it. one one second. So just here we had studied over here how to get the lower and upper bound. So this is for 95% confidence, right? So you get you calculate the chi-square statistic for uh, 0 0.025 with degrees of freedom equal to four, right? Yeah. So I think you should get this answer. Um, so Prabhat has found out the variance. So that is correct. Uh, so we wanted a uh, standard confidence interval for the standard deviation, which is just the root of this. So it is fine. So you should get this answer. So what we are doing here is uh, your n is 5, s is 4.2, 4.22. So your chi-square statistic at uh, 0 0.025 with four degrees of freedom is this, this value. And your chi-square for 0 0.0975, 0 0.975 is 11.14. So your 95% confidence interval for sigma square, okay, now becomes, so here we had, so we have written sigma square. So sigma square is n minus one, which is four multiplied by the chi-square, uh, this is the sigma square, okay, sample, uh, deviation this s square okay so 4.22 square divided by the chi square statistic and similarly the upper bound will be n minus 1 into s square divided by the chi square statistic okay i think uh, a lot of people are now getting the answers so congratulations to all of you okay so now let's go to, I think we have 10 more minutes. Let me just look, take a look at how much there is to study. Okay. Um, so I think guys today also the lecture will uh, go overboard by like 10, 15 minutes. So I'll try to uh, finish this fast. Okay. So now uh, we have one sample proportion. Okay. Uh, so suppose you are given, uh, let's take a practical example, okay, um, you have, okay, now you have, uh, you are Mintra's data scientist, okay, so now you want to identify how many images should we show to the customer. So this is your Mintra web page. How many images should we show to a customer for a product which will increase their, uh, like suppose 100 people view this website, two people buy this web, uh, purchase. So your proportion is 0 0.02, okay? And you are, you are testing against eight images, okay? So you have eight images over here. Okay, now I want to identify. Um, uh, okay, so see now this, this is right now comparing. So we'll come to this later. So now suppose this is the sample that you are given. Okay, so you want to identify what is the population, uh, the proportion, how many people are coming to this website and buy in this entire population. Okay, so what will you use? You need n, right? And you need theta, right? So this is the uh, this is the sample uh, proportion, and this is the sample size. Okay, so everyone remembers binomial distribution where we were we were counting the number of successes right so here our number of success is 2 okay so everyone uh, can calculate the confidence intervals for this problem anyone has any uh, doubts with regard to this 
So here we are calculating the 95% confidence interval. So for a binomial distribution, you remember the standard deviation is given by uh, theta into one minus theta, right? And over here, uh, you can just divide it by root n. Okay, so theta into one minus theta is the variance and you just divide by root n. Okay, so you can just calculate the uh, confidence intervals similarly like Z and T distributions. Okay, so this sample proportion will follow the Z distribution, okay. Okay, so you must remember that for a binomial distribution, there were some uh, clauses like n into p, n into theta should be greater than five. Uh, you remember this? So there are some conditions for a binomial distribution to uh, so that we can uh, get some uh, inferences from a binomial distribution. Okay, so you can just look at those uh, conditions later on. So let's do an example. Okay, so in one year, mortality investigation, 45 of the 250 90 year olds present at the start of the investigation died. Okay. So what is the sample proportion? It is 45 by 250. Okay. And we know n, okay, which is 250 people. Okay. So calculate a symmetric 90% confidence interval for the unknown mortality rate P. Okay, so what will it be? It is very simple. So P we know 45 by 250, 45 by 250 plus minus the Z value corresponding to the 90% confidence. 90% confidence Z values, I think 1.74, 1.76, I don't remember. So 1.76 multiplied by uh, theta, into one minus theta divided by n whole under root. Okay, so you can see. Okay, so Yash has already gotten the answer. So we can see that uh, Z value corresponding to 0 0.05 is minus 1.6 and 0.95 is one same thing positive. So your sample standard deviation will be P into one minus P by N whole under root, right? And here you can get the 90% confidence interval. Okay, any doubts, people? Uh, I just had one question. If they had asked how many had survived, so we have just uh, done one minus P cap, right? And use the same parameters for this confidence. Um, like here so they have asked mortality rate, but if they had asked the survival rate, though, so we have we would have just changed the probability by one minus the P cap so one. One question that you should have asked over here, Savagya, to the interviewer is, is mm -hmm. the number of survivors a binomial distribution? Okay. Okay. That's a good question. This is an important question that you should ask. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you can just change, uh, like you can do whatever you were saying. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so everyone is clear with this proportion example. No doubts. Please let me know if any doubts. I don't have any a lot of time, so I won't be able to wait for you to. Everyone is clear. Okay. So now let's compare the sample means. Okay. So now what we were doing over here earlier. So now suppose you have two pop. Uh, you have. Uh, Uh, okay, wait. So now, uh, suppose you want to compare the means between two samples, okay, coming from two different populations. Okay, so here, you will have a test, like you will have a control group. Okay, and you will have a test group. Let me just rub this out and make it again.
okay so now you will have a test group so these two groups are two different populations okay now as a data scientist for mintra if you want to identify is showing five um, images better or is showing eight images better huh? so you would want to compare the proportion the success people right everyone is getting this intuition so uh, you would want to compare the mu given by this test set okay so mu 2 minus mu 1 so this will give you what is the increase in success rate everyone understands this please write in chat guys how why we are doing this comparison and what we mean by this mu2 minus mu1 guys please let me know in chat Okay, so why, whenever we do, whenever we want to compare two different um, samples, right? So, so Bhagya, uh, you can do mu one minus mu two also, ha. Huh? But then the success rate will be negative, which shows that mu two is greater than mu one. The success okay. rate of mu two is better than mu one. Okay. Yeah. So we That's... want to. our hypothesis is so this will be the basic crux of hypothesis testing okay so this what we have done over here is ab testing this is like the most important tool for a product manager okay so here we have compared the two different means okay so uh, you can compare the success rate this way so here the formula is you have two samples okay in which we know the population uh, variance okay so sigma 1 and sigma 2 is known and you know n1 n2 you know x bar 1 and x2 bar so you can calculate this uh, value okay uh so let us is there an example over here okay there is okay so first let's study the t statistic first okay so now uh, suppose you don't know uh, the population variance you don't know the sigma okay so you can first of all get to this intuition that you will not be using the z statistic you will be using the t statistic okay so first of all get this intuition that you will be using the t t statistic so the t statistic for this is the formula is defined as x1 bar minus x2 bar Plus minus t at alpha by two. So similarly, like ninety five percent, if it was, if it was ninety five percent confidence. So alpha is zero point zero five. So alpha by two is zero point zero two five. Nothing. This is not what anything different from what we have studied up till now. Okay. So but the degrees of freedom for this t t statistic will be n one plus n two minus two. Okay, so this is important to remember. Okay, and you can calculate this part, and this SP you can calculate using this formula over here. Okay, so this is just uh, like these are just formulas. I think in your interviews you will not be asked to actually calculate this. you can just tell them that uh, you will be doing it this way but while applying when you are on the job you might be using this uh, these formulas okay so don't worry about all of this formula just know that for your as from your interview interview perspective when you are comparing two different uh, samples coming from two different populations this s1 and s2 this should be nearly equal okay now um the just a derivation of this formula sp is in such a way that s1 and s2 is equal okay so we do not need to go into the details right now because that will not be asked and this is out of the syllabus but this is important just to know that s1 and s2 should be nearly equal okay now let's do an example 
when these both s1 and s2 are coming from different population correct it is coming from different population so then also they are equal they should be nearly equal to compare if okay. if they are not you cannot compare okay this is requirement for this formula to hold correct yes okay, okay. now let's do an example so a motor company runs tests to investigate the fuel consumption of cars using a newly developed fuel additive okay 16 cars of the same make are and age are used okay so uh, two samples a to over here a to over here okay and the results in miles per gallon over a test track under regulated conditions are as follows okay so these are the two uh, samples obtain a 95% confidence interval for the increase in miles per gallon achieved by cars with the additive okay so state clearly any assumptions required for this analysis so how would we go about solving this problem so here we know that just like we compared samples we can do it for samples like we like we did it for proportion we can do it for the sample means also okay so you have eight cards over here you have eight cards over here but this has additives okay so first of all you would calculate the sample mean x1 bar you would calculate the sample mean x2 bar okay so now we do not know the sigma 1 we do not know sigma 2 so what would we use over here first of all which formula would we use can you please let me know in chat the first one or the second one you can just let me know that way the sigmas are not known na right? yeah in the question the sigma was not known right you were not okay, given the second sigma. case okay so what uh, which one should we use okay so everyone is saying t statistic okay second problem or t statistic so that is correct so we will use the t statistic okay so what will be the uh, degrees of freedom what should be the degrees of freedom no so why are you guys saying 7 7 should not be the degrees of freedom so nikhila has the right answer So the degrees of freedom would be eight plus eight minus two, which is equal to fourteen. Okay. So what will our uh, what will our uplift be in terms of miles per gallon? Uh, how much better mileage are we getting? It will be nothing but x two bar minus x one bar plus minus. So t statistic corresponding to uh, how much is the confidence interval required? Ninety-five. So t statistic corresponding to zero point zero two five with fourteen degrees of freedom multiplied by this S P into one by n one plus one by n two. Okay. So you will need to calculate this S P. So what is one important assumption required over here? S1 and S2. The variances are the same. Yeah. Please write in chat, please. Everyone, uh, Nikhila is right. So you guys are also right, but please let let's write in chat. Okay, I want everyone to get an opportunity to answer. Correct. So variance should be nearly the same. Okay. So we are doing the same thing over here. So uh, now. you can also compare two sample variances okay so for the same problem you can compare the sample variances so you can um so does anyone have any idea how we will compare the sample variances using chi square so, so see chi square 
you were using when you only had one population okay one sample what was the statistic which had two samples f distribution okay, please write in chat please so since you have said it it is the f distribution okay so um this is the formula everyone remembers um let's let me write it also so s1 square by sigma 1 square divided by s2 square divided by sigma 2 square this is equal to f n minus 1 n minus 2 okay so if you just interchange this so uh, if you just take sigma square sigma 1 square over here and this over here so you will get sigma 1 by sigma 2 is greater than this okay so if you just change if you just bring this over here so you will get so i'm just writing s1 and s2 okay i'm not writing squares don't get confused okay sigma 1 sigma 2 e to f so you just bring it over here bring this over here so it will be s1 by s2 now i'm writing square divided by f statistic should be equal to sigma 1 square by sigma 2 square okay and what was the other formula we had s2 square by sigma 2 square by s1 square by sigma 1 square this is equal to f n min uh, n2 minus n2 minus 1 and n1 minus 1 so again if you change this you will get the same this formula okay so this is how you define the range for sample variances okay so here you want to identify what is the proportion what is the ratio of the population variances everyone is understanding any doubts yes please let me know My, i just had one doubt like in the previous also question uh, we were cal when we were calculating the confidence interval we were adding the confidence interval of both the variables and then subtracting it by two like yeah. we did interval no 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 we were not confident sorry sorry, sorry the degrees of freedom uh, yes. were added and then we subtracted it by two i was Correct. a bit confused why we did that so don't go into the why this is a formula okay like i can yes. explain okay. like there is an explanation for this but you do not need to know this okay okay so it just uh you just want I just to wanted to ask, like, if there will be three samples, then we will sub, uh, add them and subtract by three, right? No, no. Why will mm. you compare? How will you compare three samples? You want to just know what is the uplift between this sample and this A B. You are not. You only do A B testing. You never do A B C testing. Have you ever heard of A B C testing? So you would want to compare A and B, B and C, and A and C. So you will always use two samples. You will never use three samples. Okay. okay. So now uh, everyone has understood how to get the ratio of the population variances. Okay. So now we have studied how to compare the sample proportions. Okay. The example that we saw over here. So here we were comparing the sample proportions. Okay. So. Um, The formula for this is like the formula we have not studied up till now. So the formula for this is theta one minus theta two, which is the uh, proportion in sample one minus the proportion in sample two, plus minus. Now we, here we will use the z statistic, okay? And you use this formula, where we are just doing the standard deviation, okay? SD one plus SD two. Oh, this is variance one plus variance two. Okay. So yeah, this is the formula for this uh, when you want to compare the sample proportions. Okay. So let's take an example. Uh, Mayank, if uh, I doesn't have binomial uh, population, mm -hmm. if I have something else than that, then this formula changes because a standard deviation will be different for different uh, distributions. Um, so here we are only concerned about the proportion. 
okay so if if your proportion is not binomially distributed you will not be able to apply this uh, formula okay so, this so we have different formulas for uh, different uh, uh, populations so um to so see when you are talking about proportions your uh, formulas will be uh, your proportions need to be binomial okay. okay and when you are talking about the actual means then your uh, distributions need to be normal okay okay so nothing is uh, we have studied up till now okay okay so now uh, see let's do an example there are two sample proportions uh, for a two sample proportion in a one year mortality investigation 25 of the 190 year old males and 20 of the 150 90 year females present at the start of the investigation died okay so now calculate the 95% confidence intervals for the difference between the male and female mortality rate okay so what are we trying to find can you please let me know in chat what are we trying to find the uh, the proportion or the variance uh, two variances okay so uh, i can see everyone is thinking the right thing proportion so now what is theta 1 and theta 2 theta 1 is what 25 by 100 and theta 2 is 20 by 150 right it's very simple so now we can just apply this formula okay and get the 95 percent confidence intervals so let's do this uh, okay there is no solution to it so we will just use the z value corresponding to 95 percent which is 1.96 multiplied by root over so theta 1 we know uh, 0.25 and theta 2 is uh, 2 by 15 okay See, Mayank, uh, do we have to divide the z value by 2? This is again the same thing. No, this is not z value by 2. This is alpha by 2. Yeah, alpha by so, 2. So, uh, for a 95% confidence, your z value is corresponding to 0 0.025 and 0 0.975, right? So, this yeah. is the same thing. Whatever we have been doing up to now, it's the same thing. Okay, okay. Okay. So, yeah. So, everyone is clear with this how to get this also. Right, so I think this clear, this completes the end of our lecture today. So we are thirteen minutes overdue. So let me let me uh, open the let start the Kahoot uh, quiz. And anyone has any doubts up till then? Until I start the Kahoot quiz, please let me know. Uh, Mayank, in case of the binomial, uh, if the distribution is not symmetrical, then can we take the two z values? What do you mean by distribution is not symmetrical? Uh, binomial, it's not necessary. It always be a symmetrical, right? No, binomial distribution is a promotion. Like it is also, it is a, it is distributed around the mean. So you remember binomial distribution, right? Yes, yes. Flipping, you are flipping coins, and you are counting the number of heads. Yes. Okay. So it will be distributed around uh, the mean, right? Around uh, the mean, yeah, yeah. Got it. Then it will be smart. So we can't see the cohort. Yeah, I'm just starting. Any more questions? I guess after solving more questions, then only we will get the sense and have more questions. No, no, before solving, before solving, any more questions, guys? No. Like what, how we are, first of all, see what we have done today. We have studied confidence intervals, how to get confidence intervals. Okay, so first we found the confidence interval for a mean, for a sample mean. Okay, then we found the confidence interval for a sample uh, variation, for a variance. 
okay uh, then we studied how to compare the means of two different samples then we studied how to compare the proportion of two different samples then how to compare the variance of two different samples okay so i hope everyone is clear with what we have studied today so confidence intervals okay we have a short quiz